Is the Samsung Galaxy A51 worth buying in 2020? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. This video is sponsored by Armadillo Tech and their Vanguard Series case for the Samsung Galaxy A51. If you're looking for a durable case, for your Samsung Galaxy A51 that's also affordable, then I think you're definitely going to want to consider this particular case from Armadillo Tech. On the inside of the case, we have a nice honeycomb build, which is great for shock absorption. It's very easy to install your Galaxy A51 into the case. Remove the inner band, then place your Galaxy A51 into the actual band itself, button direction first. See how easy that is? Then from there, you're going to want to drop this into the rubberized portion of the case. Then make sure you snap all the various edges into the case so you have a nice, snug, secure fit. And now you're all good to go. So you're getting a very deep lip on the side. So that's great if you want to lay your phone down, face flat on a surface, or maybe you accidentally drop your device onto a surface. You're also free to install your own screen protector and the case will not get in the way. You can even access various software features like the app edge with no issues at all. You can see on the left side of the case, we have Vanguard branding. We also have a nice texture here, which also assists with the shock absorption. On the right side of the case, we have a similar texture. Then we have buttons for the on off and also for the volume down and volume up. So those buttons are very easy to press, extremely snappy. Then take a look at the top. We have a cutout for the noise canceling microphone. Then on the bottom, we have a hole for the speaker, a hole for the microphone, and then we actually have flaps for the USB-C port, and we have a flap that covers the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So both of those flaps keep dirt and dust out of your various ports, which is very important, of course. And then things get even better on the back. So a nice large cutout for the camera module, which is great. We have a very rough and tough plastic material on the back, which is going to hold up really well over time. We have some Armadillo Tech branding right here. And then we have a kickstand. So this kickstand is excellent to use if you just want to prop your phone up. Maybe you like to have it in this position when you're sitting at your desk, for example, to see your various notifications. You can also put the phone on its side with the kickstand, which really comes in handy if you want to watch video content, for example. So that's a really nice bonus that they've included here in the case. But overall, I'm a big fan of this case from Armadillo Tech. They have a really cool team with some excellent people behind this product and their other products. And definitely take a look at the link in the video description if you want to learn more about this case and their company. But I appreciate the support, and let's get right into the video. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here. And in this video, we're going to be discussing whether or not the Samsung Galaxy A51 is worth getting. Now, I'm recording this in April of 2020 and this phone was actually launched in December of 2019 so at the time of me recording this video the phone is roughly five months old I know for many people who might not have been familiar with this phone already that's a bit of a surprise because the design and overall form factor of this phone is very similar to many of Samsung's latest 2020 devices, including the Galaxy S20, as it has a rectangular camera module on the back and also has a 20 by 9 aspect ratio with an infinity O for the front facing camera. These are all design elements that have been incorporated in many of Samsung's latest phones that have come out this year. So certainly from a design perspective, this phone is very up to date and current. In fact, Samsung still has many big plans for the Galaxy A51. For example, they're planning on launching it at a variety of different US carriers this summer. So things are really just getting started with the A51. Now this particular variant of the phone is the international factory unlocked GSM model of the Galaxy A51. So if you use a GSM carrier in the US, whether that's AT&T or T-Mobile, then you're going to be able to use this variant of the phone with no problems at all. And in fact, you can buy it right now on Amazon, and I will be leaving a link in the video description to where you can check it out. The phone is being offered for around $300. The price is always changing though, so definitely take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing. 
but if you can get this phone for around 300 bucks, then I think you're getting a really good deal overall because the device really does offer a lot for what you're paying. Now the phone comes with a 6.5 inch display and as I mentioned earlier, it does feature the Infinity O. So we have a hole punch for the front facing camera, which is 32 megapixels. Now the display itself features Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So not the newest, most durable variant of Gorilla Glass, but still good to see that we are getting Gorilla Glass. The display itself features Super AMOLED technology. So really good colors here. Everything looks bright and clear and viewing angles are really good as well. Also, the display is 1080p, so we're getting a very good resolution. We're getting a PPI of 405 and as I mentioned a little while ago, a 20 by 9 aspect ratio. So a lot of devices are really moving in this direction of having a more narrow but taller form factor. And that's really great for the ways that most people use their phones nowadays. For example, if you're on Instagram, having a more narrow but taller form factor allows you to see even more content in a single frame. It's also really good for browsing the web for that same reason. And when you're watching video, you can get a very immersive experience. So I'm certainly a fan of this form factor. Now, of course, we're getting a very good screen to body ratio here too, with very small bezels all around. And even the bottom bezel is pretty much almost the same size as the other bezels, so a pretty small bezel there too. So like I said, the front facing camera is 32 megapixels. Now take a look at my full review for the Samsung Galaxy A51 to see some samples about the cameras on the device. But on the back of the phone, we have a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 5 megapixel depth sensing camera, and a 5 megapixel macro camera for close up photos. Now, in my opinion, the macro camera is a bit of a gimmick because you can pretty much replicate the final product from it with the main camera. And in many situations, the main camera can actually do a better job. So let me do a demonstration showing you right now by taking a picture of this microphone. So I'm going to go over to the macro camera right now. I'm going to focus in on the front part of the microphone. So I'm going to move very closely here, at least as close as I can, so that everything is completely in focus, which looks to be right about there. So clearly with the macro camera, I can take a very good looking close up image. That's for sure. But let me go back to the camera app right now. And I'm going to go over to the main camera. And you can see that at first I do have to be a little bit further away, but I'm going to take a picture right now. And then we'll go over to the photo and you can see that I can actually zoom in very far and things look very clear as well. So in my opinion, the main camera can do everything that the macro camera can do, but in many ways it does a better job. So I don't really have a problem that they have a macro camera on this device, but I don't think it really needs to exist either. Now we do get portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras on this device, which is great. We're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the phone and Samsung's Exynos 9611 processor. So a decent amount of RAM and a pretty solid processor as well. Now I did run an Intuitu benchmark test with the phone and I'll show you the score right now. And I got an overall score of 177594. So that's not too bad. Of course, it's gonna be a lot lower than what you get with a flagship like the Galaxy S20, for example but you're also not paying $1,000 to get this phone. But for the majority of people out there, this phone will give you enough power to do everything that you need to do, whether that's going on social media, playing moderate to light games, going on the web, streaming video, sending text messages, doing phone calls, all that stuff will work out really well with the Galaxy A51. So like I said, most people out there will be very happy with the performance that this phone does offer. Now the device features 128 gigabytes of internal storage. So a lot of storage there with the phone. And if that's not enough for you, you also get SD card expansion. So that's great too. Now there's no wireless charging with the Samsung Galaxy A51. There's also no NFC, so no Samsung Pay. And there's also no waterproofing or water resistance. So those are some of the downsides with the phone, so keep that in mind. We do get face unlock, and we also get a fingerprint sensor built into the display. So I'll show you that right now. Now this in-display fingerprint sensor does work really well. It's nice and fast and responsive, 
So I'm very happy with it in general. Now video recording with the device maxes out at 4K with the rear camera, which is really awesome. I remember it wasn't too long ago that you had to get a flagship phone to get 4K video recording. But no, with the Galaxy A51, it's not a flagship, but you still do get that feature, which I'm a big fan of. Now this device features a very beefy battery at 4,000 milliamp hours, and you can also charge it very quickly at 15 watts. To put things into perspective, the iPhone 11 features a 5 watt charger, so essentially you can charge this device up three times faster than most people do that use the standard wall adapter with their iPhones. And you do get the 15 watt fast charger in the box. Now the software on here is Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.0. So you're getting many of the software features that you typically get with a flagship from Samsung, which is really cool. For example, you get the app edge here so you can pair up your favorite apps on the side of the device and many other awesome features too. If you want to learn more about the software on this phone, then definitely make sure to check out my Samsung Galaxy A51 tips and tricks video. But now that we've gone over the specifications of the phone, let's take a closer look at the hardware. So I already talked a lot about the display here, of course. You know, we are getting that very large 6.5 inch display at 1080p, and it is super AMOLED. So it's really bright, great looking, crisp and clear, you know, excellent for content consumption overall. Now, the band running around the device is actually made out of plastic, so it is not metal, despite it looking kind of like it is. On the left side of the phone, we have the slot for the microSD card and SIM card. On the right of the device, we have the power button and volume button. And also, another thing that I know some people might wonder is why all the buttons are on the right side of the phone instead of being on both the right and left. You can see here on the left, there's pretty much no buttons to be found. And the reason for that is because in many parts of the world, flip cases are very popular and you definitely don't want to have buttons on the left side of your device if you are using a flip case. So that's why all the buttons are on the right side of the phone. Now on the top of the device, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. We have the microphone and we have the speaker. Then on the back side of the phone, we have the camera module, of course, with the flash and the Samsung logo. We also have this really cool design on the back that features almost like a rainbow tint to it. And also, let me know what you think of this color. I think this blue color looks really cool and it's very bright and bold as well, but they do have other colors available as well for this phone. So take a look at the link in the video description to see all the various colors that you can get. So is the Samsung Galaxy A51 worth buying in 2020? Well, at least as of April of 2020, Samsung really is just getting started with this phone. It's going to be relevant throughout the year. As I mentioned earlier, the phone hasn't even made its way officially to carriers yet. And I know that all the major carriers have very big plans to sell the Galaxy A51 in their stores. I know they're going to be offering usually a lot of great promos and deals as well in exchange for signing a contract or at least starting a new plan. So stay tuned as I'll be going over a lot of coverage in the future regarding ways to get this phone through carriers at very good prices. But if you do want to go the factory unlocked route, then definitely take a look at the link in the video description and consider going with this particular version of the phone. It's great having an unlocked phone because you can easily go from carrier to carrier. But on the other hand, you're not getting some of those discounts that you sometimes get by going to an actual carrier store, whether that's online or in person, and purchasing your phone that way. But many features with this phone stand out to me. First thing is, I'm a big fan of the design. Of course, having a very good screen to body ratio here, a very nice aspect ratio as well at 20 by 9, and then an excellent looking display here too, with it being super AMOLED at 1080p and large in size at 6.5 inches, really does make this phone a really sweet looking device and also a very functional device as well. I also like that we're getting 4K video recording. I like that we're getting a fully featured camera module here with a quad camera setup. It's great having 48 megapixels, but it's also really cool to see that with a lower end mid-range phone like this one, we are getting an ultra wide angle camera. So that's really cool as well. And then as far as performance goes, we're getting quite a bit of RAM and we're getting the Exynos 9611, which is a solid processor as well. So overall, 
The Samsung Galaxy A51 should remain relevant throughout this year. I know that even in early 2020, this phone's predecessor, the Galaxy A50, is still a very decent and competitive phone, despite it being over a year old. So I'd imagine that the A51 will be taking the same route. And while this phone has been a very big success so far for Samsung, I think it's going to be an even bigger success throughout this year. So things are really exciting for both the Samsung Galaxy A51, its current owners, and anyone considering going with this device. But I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to sub to the channel. Also take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone. And also take a look at the sponsored link as well. But thanks again everyone for watching this video. This is the Samsung Galaxy A51 in 2020, and I hope you have a great day.